nice and stiff. There's a vintage theme showing through. I have a cover, but I'm going to have a go. Decorate a journal made out of an old book. Junk journal tutorial, step by step. Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm going to collage the cover of this book. In my last video, I chose this book, altered it, and then created a spread. So now I want to decorate it so I can move forwards and have fun filling it up. With so much choice for decoration, we can sometimes just feel a bit stuck and that would delay us creating a lovely spread or a collage or two. So today I'm going to share my process and the way that I go about this so that you can decorate your book and fill it with papery goodness. And if this sounds good to you, playing with paper and just having fun, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I have lots more videos to come. When I started this process a couple of weeks ago, making this altered book, I thought that I might use this. It's just an absolutely stunning stamp of a cluster of little mushrooms, red toadstools, and I've painted them using my gouache paints and also some of my real brush pens. And it felt like the size of it might work. It felt like the colours were super autumnal and I just really love the combination of all of these shades. So I had a go at stamping and painting it and I found a page from a book that worked which is nice and stiff and as I filled it in and created a glorious combination of colours I started to emote with it. I started to want it to be the right answer. It felt like it was the right size but I reached out on my first video and asked you what you thought of it and I got some great feedback. It would need the book to open this way and I don't know that that's right. And also do we really want just one piece on the front here, something so singular to cover the front of this altered book? So I'd had an idea and I battled with it and I think I've probably got to accept that I need to pass over this and think of something else. And I have just seen a little bit of irony. The heading on this book page is called A Frustrated Fight. Isn't that appropriate? So much as I love this and I'd love to incorporate something to do with cute little red toadstools into this book, I will have to pass on it and put this one on the side and be a little bit more circumspect like we were when we chose the book. So that can go on the side there and I'll have to say momentarily goodbye to my beautiful paints and my palette of autumnal colours and see what else we can think about to cover this book. So I reached into my stash, I found another gorgeous stamp and there's something about sunflowers and September that really are magic and can help our pages come to life. So it's a beautiful stamp with a very large flower, so plenty of scope for colouring. So I had a go at stamping this one, comes out quite bold, lots of strong lines which is really good. I like the text on it with some very pretty text here, Sunflower Composite, Composite I think it says, and I had a go at colouring it. And I used my real brush pens again in various shades of I've got bumblebee yellow, I've got a very nice green here, chamomile for the leaves. Basically I just pulled out some of my toys and had a go at blending and real brush pens in particular, my pens from Arteza are fabulous for creating these blended shades to get depth around the centre of the flower and something interesting, something varied in the petals. I was thinking about this one because I had done a sunflower about a year ago in my little junky art journal and I really enjoyed making this one and you can see the difference, proportionality, this one has a much bigger head but when I practiced and played at making and drawing and painting this one with the same real brush pens I really felt that it got some 3D and came to life. At this stage I was thinking that would be perfect for the cover of our altered book. I could tear it down and add washi tape, I could put some layers and do some collage, 
but there's something about this that is too big and I'm slightly tortured because again I want to use it I want to put it in here maybe it goes within the book instead but it doesn't feel right it's too big a player on what is a relatively small cover so I think what I have to do is much as I want to have a play at stamping and colouring a sunflower I think again I have to set this aside and come up with another solution so I'm reaching into my memory bank to think what can I pull together and also what have I got by way of little pieces of paper what perhaps could I use that I could collage using lovely little pieces of paper from my stash, labels, maybe little tags, lovely vintage postcards, bits of scrapbook paper. What could I do that would bring this together, that would create a beautiful cover and then allow us to move forwards and fill the book and create something that we absolutely love? So I was thinking that the best compromise for something pretty on the cover, and indeed I want to do something with the inside as well, might be to reach into my art journal from last year and perhaps do something with the mushroom that I've already painted and bring that together with some collage. So I've had a go at something new and you might like to do this with some of your own artwork or you could cut an image out of a magazine and do the same. But what I've done is scan my own picture and just put it into PowerPoint in this case and put a border around it and have a play and have a think and because I put it into a scanned image I've been able to shrink it in fact I've been making little stamps out of these tiny little squares that I've created and shrunk them down I'm thinking about a smaller image to use on the cover today so something that doesn't overly dominate and then maybe building up some collage layers behind and what I'd like to do is take you through that process and see if we can get to something that we absolutely love. I do think the toadstools are super autumnal and they're happy and cheerful and I want that theme in this book. I had a go at printing the same images on vintage book paper and I really think that's working well so that might be something I use on another occasion. The comedy element to this one is, because I'm not particularly technological, I did manage to print this with the text upside down. Although when I come to think about it, in this world of my craft desk where there are no rules, why wouldn't the text be upside down? The book's a hundred years old that we're printing on. We can do whatever we like. So what I'm doing is just thinking about what will be the focal point on this book, how big do I want that focal point to be and then I'm going to pull out some items and just put some layers behind and this will be a little bit like the collage cards that I made a couple of months ago I'm going to bring some sumptuous colours and layers and depth behind the focal point and then hopefully end up with a beautiful cover that makes us sing when we sit at our craft desk and want to play so to start the collaging process, I have punched out a couple of those images. I've punched one hole and the punch I have has a fluted edge, which I thought was really great for fitting with that sense of that frilly edge toadstool, which you sometimes see in the raggedy pieces of stalk underneath the cap. I also punched one out with an edge to it, the edge to the original image that I'd scanned and printed and I don't really know whether that's going to work but why have a complete circle when you can have one that's a little bit more random? In fact this one I think has come out a little bit smaller so as you can see we've got more of the whole image from the original picture and I, I quite like that, I like the proportions so as I'm pulling these little pieces together I'm thinking what will give me the best effect and perhaps this one with more of the image is the one that I'm going to choose. This is the punch that I used and in fact it has a fluty edge as I said and I like that but it's the only large circle punch I have so do you know what that's what we're using and all I've done is scan and print that on copy paper so it's not on anything particularly special. So now what I want to do 
is combine that with some other layers. I do a lot of layering in my craft work. In the past I have had a play with cards and creating a focal point and layering is absolutely critical when you're putting together a card with perhaps a sentiment that's really special for somebody. So what I'm going to do is just have a little of a play with some of the papers that I've pulled out of my stash and this is a really random and varied mix. There'll be so many different ways in which we could put something together on this book but what's important to me at this stage as I sift through is to see some of those colours and maybe patterns and themes that I want to put on the cover. So I've chosen this for example because it's got that rusty red on it, it's got some ink in fountain pen, somebody's written on the front and I like the stamp as well. So that's a candidate. This caught my eye because it has a beautiful book page that I've stamped on in a an ombre ink. I think I played with this when I was sharing some ideas on how to use a book page. So I have a pocket here and I'm thinking that I might use that on the inside cover somehow. I've got some little text pieces, some gorgeous small tags and I'm lucky enough to have access to some digi kits. I don't have a lot and I think they have their place. It's about using them to support and really add to what you want to do. That That's the way it works for me, um, but whatever works for you. Beautiful little mushroom, again, some more tags, script, a nice piece of scrapbooker, scrapbook paper that I have stamped on and sometimes I colour these with watercolour, that's a potential. I've obviously cut out some pictures from scrapbook paper um, a little bit from a Tina Shabby Dabby Doo Da digi there. Scrapbook paper that I have done collaging on. I think I was playing at making a masterboard. Um, all sorts. But there's a warmth about these colours. There's a difference in texture. There's a vintage theme showing through. And I think that will work somehow for the mushroom today. So a bit like putting up a tent. I think I want to have some kind of main pole, some backbone something fundamental that defines the position of all the other pieces. I typically don't want my focal point to be slap bang in the middle so I feel that that needs to be maybe at least to the side and because I'm going to use this one with the flat edge here I think I'll bring that closer to the right. So I'm going to choose this piece here, it's too big so I will cut it off at either the top and top or the bottom and I think most sensibly I'll cut that at the top and I'm just going to use a few little pieces of scrapbook paper to collage behind. I'm going to take this off just because it's clanking, although it's really pretty, it's just getting in the way. The other thing I'm thinking about as I position these is not having lines completely lined up. So what I mean by that is the edge of this I don't want to be running continuously with the edge of the piece of paper above. I want different positions so that they are more interesting, something like that. But the, the thought process that I have is, as I move this around, to cover up junctions, so to cover up where pieces of paper join, so that it looks like magic, the layers behind, but also to show as much of some of these pieces as possible. I did see Barbara's 49 Dragonflies uh, bullet junk journal that she's been creating and I really like the way that she's put something like notes on the front and I was thinking of doing something like that so I want to incorporate those too. So I have pulled out some text on a label and I thought again something circular would be good because it empathises with the raggedy edged slightly circle that we have for the mushroom and the focal point. And I think rather than have it right to the edge, if I'm going to have a bit of a margin at the top here, so that's a little bit of a gap, I'll have an equivalent margin at the bottom. So why don't we just trim that first, take a little bit off, as lined up as possible. So I'll just cut that off and I'm going to put this on, but when I glue it to begin with, I'm going to leave some of this edge unglued so that I can tuck things underneath if I want to. So let's just put some glue on this side 
to begin with. It's a pretty strong glue I'm using. I'm going to go fairly close to the edge. I can always add more underneath. But we'll just do half of the vertical. So I've got something to begin with and I know that I want to put this somewhere over here and again maybe I want that to be just north of centre. So I think what I will do is have a very beautiful rusty little tag, lovely little bees, a little bit of measuring tape. That can go, that can go under there but I need to be careful not to line that up as well. I have that one up there sticking out a bit then I think we're getting there. I'm going to get this tag stuck in first so that will go flat down I can get glue on all of that. I do think that positioning is one of the most important features of what is an appealing finished collage so it is the items themselves of course it's the colour blend it's the texture but it's also the positioning and it's not always easy to do. So I've got something forming. I'll hold my, oh, where's it gone? I'll hold my little feature in place. Maybe that's going to go there. Maybe that one can go there. Oh, I like it. It's coming together. Right, so that's going there. Let's put a tiny mark underneath. That would be a bit smarter where that's going and that can have glue all over the back and I do need to remember to think about where my little bits of text are going to go as well. I'm going to lose this writing which is a shame but I think it needs to be done. So what I've got at the moment is balance moving to the right so we have activity going on the right here we've got three elements and just a singular one it's quite busy but just one on the left side. So I'm now going to think about how to use a bit more of this space up here. Can I do it without destroying the beauty of this one? So that's quite big. I think I want something just over the top here, quite like that, because I can still see the fluty edge here. I think I'm going to stick down the centre of my mushroom, get that into position, but I'll do it with just some glue in the middle. So I'm not limiting myself for tucking things underneath it. So let's be, just get it roughly north of, north of centre. That can go there. I don't really want to lose his face. He's a very nice chappy. Maybe get my field notes stuck on and see how I feel. Oh yes, it's coming together. I like it. I may just have to accept it. I want something tucked in there. And his face isn't really the feature, so I think we're just going to have to bite the bullet and do it. Let's be brave, we can't have everything, we can't keep everything on the front, we can't see everything. Oh, yes, that's just super cute. I do hope I'm helping to make some of this process a little bit more transparent and how I go about thinking about composition and position. Not that I know anything and I don't have any training but it's just what I've practiced over the years and this is what I like. But absolutely do what you like. So I think I just need to tuck down some of these little pieces. Do I need this? I don't think I do. I think that's just too much extra. And for the time being, this is what I'm going to have as the cover. I also want to decorate the inside cover, but the challenge for this is just a little bit different. What I have to begin with is a slightly tarnished but beautiful page on the right that's blank and a little inscription on the left, and I want to preserve that. And although I've got something rather bold now on the front, I feel that this should be somewhat delicate on the left hand side. So I've pulled out some smaller pieces and I think what I'll do is combine them in a little collage on the left and then I might do something a little bit bigger and braver and fatter on the right hand side. I'm always aware with an altered book that although we took out pages 
and we took out quite a few in that first video that I did and I've even created pockets that I'm going to use. I can't overfill this with too much depth so I am going to be a little bit greedy and use some depth early on on the right hand side but to begin with I am going to do a little collage here in some little labels, something muted. I'm also going to be slightly courageous and do something different and I don't know if it will work but I'm going to have a go. I haven't used these blending chalks for such a long time but I want to have a go at adding a little bit of ageing and distress to the outer corners of this page, these couple of pages, by choosing perhaps some colours from this little palette area here. So what I've got is, and the way I do this, I take a little bit of foam, you could use a tissue or cotton wool, and I'm going to just pick up a little bit of chalk and add it to the paper. And I don't know what this is going to look like and I do feel I'm taking a bit of a risk but isn't that the moment when you get so much fun, so much satisfaction because you're doing something new and different? Shall we have a go? I'll start with something a little bit neutral and just see how it comes and how it attaches on the page. I'm only picking up a very small amount and I'm also looking how it shows as a colour on the paper when I add it. I'm letting the texture of the paper be responsive to the strokes and by that I mean when I press down I'm very gentle which means that the undulations in the paper because it's never perfectly flat with a book like this are picking up just a little bit more of the chalk and I don't get a flat surface. Maybe a little bit of that yellow. So I think when we do see aged papers we don't always think a common colour do we? We see different colours and maybe just going in with my finger and blending it out a bit. I think that helps. I'm really liking the effect here. I'm being careful around the ink and the inscription there. So maybe just finishing off with my finger to, to dull it down, to merge some of those colours. We'll just see what we've got. So something just a little bit more muted and distressed. And also, haven't we personalised it when we have a go at doing things our way? If you want to see how I put this altered book together, how I chose it from the vast array of beautiful vintage books that I had on my desk, then check out my video from a couple of weeks ago where I talked through that process and then altered it and did the spread that we have in here just very quickly. And let me know if you create an altered book and come along on this journey because it's going to be one that I do together with Barbara 49 Dragonflies and also I think Tina's going to have a go, Shabby Dabby Doodah. So a number of us are joining in. It'd be lovely to have you along for the ride. So I want to finish off on the right hand side here. I've got all of this page to go for. And I thought I would just put a pocket on here, albeit a relatively small one. So I've reached into my stash and from last week's video, I have a small pocket facing with an opening to the right. This one has three tiers, so lots of space for putting things in. And I had sewn it around the edge and added some little labels and also stamped on it with text. So this is from the same family of labels from a Tracy Fox Digi. You could put anything you like on the front, you could colour it yourself, you could write on it yourself, you can stick whatever little pieces of decoration you have and what works for you. I think I'll have that just right of centre. And the reason I chose that position is I'm 
keeping a bit of a margin here which works for me and it allows me just a little bit more rebalance at the top here if I want to put something up there I don't know if I do yet I'm just going to grab a few items and, and put things in it I want to just put those in and they are of the same family palette of colours so I feel that that would work so I'll show you I've got ooh, a little bit of beautiful vintage paper there I like the red so I'm going to have that sticking out a bit more of just a little piece maybe have that behind let's see height difference as well let's keep that a little piece of rusty yellow yellow ochre there uh, another bit of handwriting from a piece of scrapbook paper that can go in another of the pockets I'm just going to add these these would work really well as journaling spots for when we start filling up the book I'm going to have another of my little toadstool pictures in there and the other thing I've been doing which if you're interested in me showing you I can do a video on this let me know I made a stamp so I shrank my little picture you could use any small image to show you that and I backed it onto a dictionary page I stamped on it and I've used a serrated edge on the scissors and it just felt like that looked like a stamp I did it with a couple of other really beautiful images these are from Susan Taylor Brown it's all about ferns and they work really well I like the shape of those and the other thing I've done on this set is actually spray it with my mica paint again which I am I apologize I'm slightly obsessed with that at the moment so they can go in there and I'm not for once going to border it with faux stitching I'm going to leave things alone I have a cover I have an interior and I have some lovely little pieces in a pocket hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this and the notification bell and give me a thumbs up because that really helps and check out my first video where I selected this book adapted it and did the first journal spread I'd love for you to come on this journey with us I hope to see you soon